Tales of Zelda Community. There were like many more. Oh, there is there's another one, but there are some others who will also be like in this room uh, this this day. Throughout this day, this room will um, like P Peter is another one. Uh, uh, hey, yes, and Jacqueline. So now all the now the committee is coming in. Um, uh, LEAP uh, is uh, short for uh, the Leadership Exchange Ambassador Program, uh, which was uh, created by Mensa International to, um, well, kind of better connect the different national Mensas that exist to uh, find people who are active in those Mensas, who have like a certain uh, perspective, point of view, a topic, uh, uh, preferably related to uh, highly giftedness or um, uh, things that go along with that, or maybe to Mensa management, and to to get these people um, out in the world. And what happens is that they are uh, selected through a selection process, which uh, the committee kind of does every year. And then yearly, five or six people from all over the world are being sent to uh, either the American gather uh, to the American gathering. Always the American, American gathering, which is like the biggest one in the world, and something you really need to need to experience. Um, and the other one will be either EMAC or the Asian uh, gathering. So, and this year, obviously, it's EMAC. Otherwise, we wouldn't all be here. So, uh, if you want to know more about the the Lee program, um, what is the URL that we can? Because yeah, yeah. Oh well, we finally have a link at ah. mensa.org. Ah, good. We, we have a page. We, we get, you get into the. Uh, members in. section, members right. area, and there is on the left hand, there is a section that says right. Lee. Yeah. Good. Um, and also there you find more information and, and um, you should expect like uh, in, in the early, uh, the, the first months of the next year uh, to, to hear about the, the next election because everybody who is a volunteer in Mensa can become part of the Lee program and join our Lee family. As Tita did, now I will give the floor to you and your wonderful presentation about uh, the, the strategic roadmap for Mensa. Please, a warm applause for you. Yeah, thank you, Roland. And thank you, all the other League Committee members. Thanks to, Inter to Mensa International for giving me the chance to bring my ideas to all of you. And um, I'm dealing with the strategy with Mensa Germany. And uh, with that, I uh, found some points which I hope are also of interest for other national matters and Mensa International. So, what can you expect? You can expect an assembly line, a test drive, pit stop, a detour and the upcoming journeys. Starting with the assembly line. So, what were we doing in Mensa Germany? Just in any other Mensa, we had different subjects that were of, of that had the, um, that were of interest. At that time it was this, and we were talking about leadership culture, and then we had some things about finances, as you usually have. There are different subjects, and they are of some importance, and uh, you somehow have to work, work with all of them together. Yeah? And what I noticed was that some people were working on minor issues and leaving major problems unsolved, and I thought, well, something is going wrong here. Yeah? And so I asked myself, but what is important and, and what's urgent? Yeah? What's the priority? What are the, what are the re relationships? Yeah? Some things depend upon one another. So, um, and with all that, I thought, yeah, there's something, we had some strategic ideas, which we worked out in 2008, but uh, it didn't really come out. Um, and so I thought, we I need of hey, what's that? <coughs> we need of a superior plan, a strategy. Yeah. And with all that, what we did before, yeah, we had. So first of all, um, what actually is strategy? Yeah. Um, it comes from the Greek word strategia. Did I pronounce it? Thank you. <laughs> it's the art of the troop leader, the office of general command, generalship. It's a high level plan, what you saw before. Yeah? Um, to achieve one or more goals under conditions of uncertainty. Strategy is important because the resources available to achieve these goals are usually limited. Yeah. And how 
do you do it? Strategy generally involves setting goals, determining actions to achieve the goals, and mobilizing resources to execute the actions. A strategy describes how the ends, goals, will be achieved by the means. The senior leadership of an organization is generally tasked with determining strategy. The senior leadership. Yeah? That doesn't mean that the, leader, the senior leadership can't do anything else, but usually there's nobody else to do it. Yeah. And, uh, well, there are many people that said wise words about strategy. I just picked one, Henry Minsberg, who defined strategy as a pattern in a stream of decisions. You need to follow the line. So, if you express it a bit more simple, what is strategy? Choose the right vehicle for your purposes. Assemble the parts. Decide for a place to go and the way. Be aware of traffic jams, roadblocks, be of petrol, and very important, make sure to have all passengers on board. <laughs> Don't leave anybody behind. So why should you actually do all this? It is to coordinate and streamline work of different units towards common goals. That is, yeah? we have got bigger targets and you need se uh, several smaller actions. Yeah? And you have to coordinate it. Reduce operational tasks of the executive board to enable decisions of strategic work. work. That was what I meant. Um, if uh, senior leadership is too busy with little operative tasks, and they haven't got the time for the strategic work. Yeah? So if you involve volunteers, make sure what they do is meaningful, not just keep them busy. Um, and also, if you're short of volunteers, or if you think that is too much for volunteers to do, evaluate the transfer of operational tasks to a board of, to a board of them, I believe, committee. Or consider uh, paid service providers. There are some things that sometimes they, they return all the time or that involve uh, specific capabilities and sometimes it's just better if you consider, well, let's pay for it and then it will be done properly and you can rely on it. Yeah. And actually it keeps it should keep Mensa's capability to operate <coughs> or again put together or short. Strategy is the way to what I want to be. So, just let me tell you a bit how it, how it all happened in Germany. In 2006, we had a survey about what, all the offers that Mensa had. And the M's were asked, what do you like, what would you like, how do you like it, and things like that, to find out what is important. Yeah. That resulted in several statements, and a year later, well, it took some time to, pre to prepare and everything, we had discussions about what, what is important for Mensa itself. Yeah? We see there is a majority of M's that is interested in this and that subject. Is this, how, how important is this? And we tried to rank it, and we, in the end, it resulted in 16 major theses. Another year later, well, the decision took some time, as you can imagine, with, at that time, I don't know exactly how many M's we were, I think around 8,000. Not all too hard, but um, quite a few. Um, it was it was put into a, a concept so that it could be decided upon in the annual gathering, and that was what we did. And we formed a self-concept and strategic orientation for the next five to ten years. Um, we ranked them into thesis with highest relevance and also broad consent into strategic goals. And we had some that we kept as second level priority because some of them, well, either there were not that many people or at that time we did not feel that we could do it. We thought, well, we should be able to give, uh, to provide um, counsel about specific schools. Yeah, but we felt that we did not have the structure to keep it operate to, to keep a list up to date with all the schools and that, so we were we thought no we won't start that because 
if we don't keep it up to date, we might give out wrong information, and that will be even worse. And so we decided, yes, it is important, but at the moment we can't do it. So we also thought we should position ourselves in terms of highly giftedness, and that's why we created a position paper, which also was decided upon, to have it as an official concept of Mensa Germany. Um, although, it didn't really work out. Nothing was done, was done with it. And so in 2012, I reviewed all these things, and I thought, well, what have we done with these things so far? And uh, I somehow found, well, not a lot, because some of the things we couldn't, we didn't really define. Yes, we had said we want to grow. Okay, since then we had crossed the line of 10,000 M's. But uh, have we reached our goal? Uh, how do we want to grow? For how long? Indefinitely? Um, do we want just any, just, just more M's? Do we want more women? Do we want them in the countryside? Do we want students? How do we want to grow? And what does it mean to grow? And all that <coughs> was open. And so I thought, there's something missing. And so I started to kick off another strategic process. And I call this a test drive. So what did we actually do? Did we reach our targets initially set? When and how? And if we reached them, did we celebrate it? Well, okay, we celebrated the 10,000 M. But um, there were many other things that uh, we had no indicators, we had no time frame, measures were not coordinated, and we had no concept of communication. And so, did we reach the, the line? We didn't know. And okay, we decided to do it better next time. Uh, how? <laughs> So we took a pit stop. Um, what should, do you usually do if you don't know what to do? You start to read books, you ask experts, you gather a team, develop a plan, kick off. Uh, <coughs> and if you still don't know what to do first, second, and so on, then I, I thought I look at other mental chapters. And that's why I went to Calgary last year to the RDD meeting and talk to some of the people there that have been involved with strategic processes in their, their Mensa. Now, well, the most, the most um, advice I got from Barry Schmiel from Canada, Heather Clore from the USA, and Kimberly Wilson from Australia. This is now our strategy team. And uh, yeah, we have got some fluctuation in that as well. Um, some people stepping out, coming in, and all that, which is quite normal. Um, but recently, we had really a kind of like a, a time of where there was hardly anything moving, and I was wondering, what is it? Um, and one of the things I identified was that I had the impression um, we had not, sorry, we didn't really have the right support. And so, just a few days ago, with one of them, with Jörg, I went with Jörg to a, to a board meeting, and I, I was wondering all the time, well, what does the board actually do about strategy? I didn't know. I'm a member of the strategy team, which, by the way, never got officially announced. <laughs> um, and I, I was wondering, what are they doing? How, what, what are their ideas, ideas about strategy, and how do they work with it? And I didn't know. Yeah, and so we went there, and we asked them, and it turned out that it was more or less what we had thought. It, it wasn't really present for them. And that's why we said, okay, here you have a subject X, like the, the, the kids and juniors work. So what does that mean with, with our, for our strategic work? What do you think about, will it, will it improve Mensa as, as a society? What will it do for Mensa if you work on kids and, and, and juniors issues? And that was the point, you really could see it in the article. Yes, that's what they meant. That is 
how it should be linked to the to the to the board work. And that was that was really a good moment. I also had a look at Mensa International because some of the things that I adopted for Mensa Germany just come from Mensa International, which is it, it's not so amazing. <laughs> we are one of the national chapters, yeah. And what we do shouldn't should 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 uh, also work out for Mensa International, and it should it should be in line. Yeah. And what I found in um, international um, papers is this nice pyramid, which we use to work about to work with. You can find it in the in the in the um, on the website. It is in the I think it's in the ACs. Actually, still in effect. Yeah. That really explained also easy to understand. Emission, what is emission? That is why we exist. What is the vision? Is what we, about what we want to be. Yeah? The goals, what we have to do to be successful. And we really like that, and that is how we are working along at the moment. And working on that, you can see the strategy builds upon mission, Vision, goals and objectives, initiatives and measures and targets. Yeah. Also that you know when you have reached your the goal. <coughs> but as a matter of fact, there also was, I don't know why it keeps skipping from time to time or something. Just blame Windows 8. <laughs> um, it did take another detour. Yeah. So <laughs> with our assembly manual, we took the mission <coughs> Meta International and translated it into German because we thought that is just perfect and that should fit it for us and it does. Yeah? We adapted the vision a bit, we took it as a basis and then thought what have we got in our pro what did we do in our process of 2008 and we put balance it out somehow. We have done a SWOT analysis which we are at the moment still working on. And we keep informing the ends. In April, we had our annual gathering, so we put some charts on a pin uh, on, on, on a pin board like that to tell them what we were actually doing, yeah? whether they had any ideas, what they thought was important, things like that. And in our next magazine, which is called the Mind Mag, Mensa in Germany is Mensa in Deutschland, so M N D magazine. We will have uh, an article about that as well. And all that we worked out um, at a workshop in March. So, do you know the, the, the mission of Mensa International and Mensa Germany? A few do, many don't. Mensa is an international federated society composed of national Mensas and direct international members. Yes. So, Mensa's purposes are why does it exist, you remember? <coughs> to identify and foster human intelligence for the benefit of humanity, to encourage research into the nature, the characteristics and uses of intelligence, and to provide a stimulating intellectual and social environment for its members. So if you look at these points, um, I think we are quite good in providing a stimulating intellectual and social environment for the members, aren't we? You're doing it right now. <laughs> We are also we also have quite a few tasks about uh, the research in intelligence and all that. I mean, we have MERF, we have the Men's Education and Research Foundation. It is not as good as the third point, but we are doing something. But what actually are we doing to identify and foster human intelligence for the benefit of humanity? <laughs> Come back to that later. <coughs> so, what were our roadblocks, our roadblocks? It's the perception of the strategic work, that is about what I said also for the board. What were they actually thinking, what strategy should be? Yeah. We didn't know, but we were, it's also from other teams. If you have a team for public relations, how, where, is the strategy in their mind? We don't know. That is something we're still working on. Yeah. It's you have to you have to make it more you have to make it more conscious to them that they keep it in mind. 
and the support of the executive board, which I think a few days ago was made the lead ahead. Also, overcoming boundaries of functional units. It's not only that we get involved if the finance team decides to, to create a financial strategy. It is also if, um, if the, the PR team decides for some marketing uh, measures, it should be, come in, it should be, it should, it should go along with a finance strategy that we are not, have decided saving lots of money because we don't need some money. And so it has to be, it, ha it has to work together. Yeah. And as usual with volunteers, you know, you need some people that you rely on and it is sometimes difficult and takes some time until you find the right people. So our next works are that we define the goals and objections, that we secure commitment also from other functional units, that we split up major goals into sub-targets, um, that we eliminate or prepare or ha to handle conflicts between goals and all these other points that we define processes and all that and keep communicating and in the end we'll have a conflict. <laughs> Hopefully. <clears throat> so what were the lessons learned? It is not, it hasn't really got a finish line. It's an ongoing journey. Um, you have to incorporate the idea of strategy. That is what I what I meant with are the people aware of what they are doing? What is the influence on the strategy? And you have to always have to link it back. I hope that it somehow gets automated and that, that it will work out. But at least you have to show them and talk to them what it, what it actually means, what they are doing. That they are not just doing a little thing, but they are part of a, a bigger piece of a bigger picture um, and you have to coordinate all these measures and I bet there will be plenty of other lessons that we can learn from that and I'm really curious for any other national men who has gone through strategic processes to learn about it and uh, so if you have got anything to tell about that please let us know and, as a matter of fact, let all the other mentors know. So, what uh, will be the next big points? Um, as I said, you've uh, seen the, the, the three points in the mission. We also have four great visions, which are linked to the missions. And, for example, we have said we want to be the network of highly in highly gifted people things like that what do you want to be mission yeah. and all these these points have to be balanced out so that it is not so much emphasis on one and the other one will be left behind and then what I thought whatever you sometimes try to, to think a few people just raise your hands and say ah, no no it says Mensa holds no opinion and I think that's I start to hate this sentence, to be honest, yeah, because sometimes it's so killing, yeah. And and I wonder, hey, what was Lancelot Lionel's Lionel Ware's intention when he created Mensa? Was it really that that we that we keep raising our hands and we hold no opinion? It, that, that can't be, yeah. If we want to do something, if we want to um, have really have a purpose. Yeah, then we have to position ourselves in some point. I don't say, I don't mean that we have to say, well, um, I think we'll support the Republican Party or we'll uh, support this social program or whatever. But in terms of highly giftedness, if we don't position there, who else will and who else should be? Yeah. And so we, I think it, we should have a major discussion, not only in Mensa Germany, but with Mensa International and with other Mensas about this, the meaning of this sentence, Mensa holds no opinion. <laughs> and then in May, I was at a gala and I met somebody of the Club of Rome. Have you ever heard of them? <laughs> ah, some more this time. Um, well, oh, come on. 
You, you scared him when you mentioned the global problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe he's against opinions. Oh. We have a secret camera here, and when you said we have to take a stand on the, we have no opinions. Yes. Just shut your computer down. <laughs> <laughs> My big brother is watching you. Yes. It's a very smart computer. It's highly intelligent. We have the X comes somewhere <laughs> around here. The computer They're watching through the webcams. <coughs> no, this is not online. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So the Club of Rome, for those people who don't know, the Club of Rome is a global think tank. And uh, they describe themselves as a group of world citizens sharing a common concern for the future of humanity. And maybe you have heard about the publication The Limits to Growth, which originally was published in 1972. Uh, since then it has been reviewed, I think, at least two or three times. Yeah. They, have, they have, at that time, um, it, it created a big attention uh, because they said, said if we work with the resources of the earth, if we continue like we are doing at the moment, then all the resources will have gone in something like 30, 40 years. And of course, well, as we know, we're still there. So it uh, had some, there, there were some points which they, they couldn't evaluate, like the development of computers, for example. Uh, they didn't know at that time. Um, but what can we learn from them? Yeah? In fact, it is a group of 70 people. Not 100,000 or whatever, it's only 70. Yeah? But they are world known. So what can we learn? The application of intelligence to the benefit of mankind. Didn't we have that a bit earlier on? I think that was in our, in our mission, wasn't it? It's a small organization, but world famous. Why aren't we? Yeah. Well, when when if, if we go out on the road and say I'm a member of Mensa, uh, I'm a member of Mensa. Uh, congratulations. What is it? Is it the students' canteen? Because in Germany, Mensa is the word for the students' canteen. And so, yeah. And they are they are known as the renal competence in a specific field, and we should be as well. Then what for actually? For something like the Global Marshall Fund Initiative. Also familiar with that? It is a network, network of uh, over 5,000 supporters from all levels of society. Um, it was uh, initially um, created by Al Gore, as far as I know. Um, and he has brought together people from politics, economic, economics, civil, civil society, and, 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 and. And the goal is to establish a framework compatible with sustainability for the global economy, a global equal social market economic, uh, economy. Yeah. It, I don't say that Meta has to subscribe to that, but it would be an idea, and I would like to trigger a discussion whether we shouldn't try and work on things like that. There are no hierarchies. We have never really got hierarchy, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Everyone is invited to actively participate. And there are at least some people where they that where where we should say, well, here is something you can do some you can do something for. Because I don't know how it, how it is with you, but I know some members or ex-members who has, uh, have left Mensa because they said, well, Mensa is not doing anything. We're just sitting together in pubs and play games. So I don't say that's wrong, but maybe we should, do a th uh, uh, we should think of something else. And that is just an idea. And as a matter of fact, I would like to know what you think about it. Yeah. Because, so, actually, what we should do is, we, we should determine what we want to do and not just respond. And we also should determine how we do it and where exactly to go. 
in order to bring Mensa any further. So thinking further together, which is the slogan of Mensa Germany. So how can we do that? Open for discussions. What do you think about what I said about Mensa International, about uh, the Club of Rome, about what we should do in the future? Is that something how we should that we should follow? Please. Um, well, it's very interesting to see this line of thought. Um, in the Netherlands, that's exactly the reason why we have the Mensa Foundation in the Netherlands now. It's because you're missing this part in Mensa in, in general. So, so we're doing a talk on the Mensa Foundation tomorrow morning. So come and listen. I've seen it already yeah. in the program. <laughs> Yeah. But it's exactly, it's, it's your point exactly. You need to be yeah. of significance for society as a whole as well. That is also part of the part yeah. of Mensa, and it needs to have a place in the national Mensa as well. Yep, it was first. Okay. Hi, I'm, I'm Jan, I'm from Denmark. Um, I'd like to go back a bit to the discussion of what you were doing, because I'm a member of the Danish board, and we're actually sort of around the same place as you are in terms of strategy. We've also been working on the strategy for yeah. the last few months. Um, we've done a SWOT analysis, uh, and, and we're now sort of in the process of, of defining goals and targets and measures and actions, yeah. etc. So first of all, I'd very much, much like to communicate with you about yes. that. Yes, would like to. <laughs> um, uh, one thing I was wondering about in terms of sort of the organization was that uh, in, in our, in, in Metro Denmark, obviously we're a much smaller organization, but the strategy work has been driven by the executive board because uh, I think that's where it belongs because the executive board is the one that's, that's also supposed to, to oversee the implementation of the strategy after that, and it should be rooted there, I think. So I was quite surprised to learn that you seem to have some separate structuring process going on. Yeah, that has been written with the board. Well, um, whenever we say, hey, we've done this and that, what do you think about it? Mm -hmm. um, the board says, mm -hmm. uh, that's fine, go ahead. Yeah. But and you don't really it, have the ownership it, It's the nice, yeah. but we don't see it working for them. And that is a link that we are presently trying to enforce and to strengthen. Yeah. To, to strengthen. Yeah. And that really needs to. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very. I think it's a key point because it exactly needs to, they need to have full ownership of the strategy. Otherwise, yes. it yeah, just, and also to communicate it down exactly. to others so that it goes through and also goes into other teams. Yeah. You, yeah. you just have to consider that uh, you may change your board every two, three years. I don't know what's the change, what's the case in Denmark, uh, but the uh, strategy is a uh, really long, uh, yes. long, long ahead. So it's like if you plan for the next ten years. Yes. You cannot just be a member of the board, and if you are not a member of the board, then you just change your strategy. You have to have a tool which will give you the strategy and will give you the path, and the board has to approve or not approve what this is going, and if this actually goes, uh, is going towards the, the, the goal or not. But it's not like uh, I'm the chair, so now I have the strategy, and then after two years I'm not the chair, so now we have another strategy, but and now, now, but no, but now that someone else is the chair. That, that is why you need to have the support of the M community of, of at least your country, because that stays. And if if the if, if the, the the annual gathering decides yes, this is what we want to do, then you have a formal conclusion about it, and you can rely on it. And then you say, hey, we decided to follow this point, and we haven't reached it yet, so let's work on it. it then it's irrelevant who put it in there. Yeah, um, it, it, it should yeah. be somehow no, uh, apart from the board. May I just reply to that? I'm just saying that you need you need the board to sort of. Even though they change, yeah. they still need yes. to oversee because it's also yeah. a rolling process. You need to yeah. change along the way. Yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you you woke up my frustration. Thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been years since I have been trying to talk to people about we should be doing something on this first objective of Mensa of mm -hmm. doing something for the benefit of humanity. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't see, actually, your, your presentation invited me to leave Mensa and go to some of those other groups. <laughs> no, 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 you have to do it the other way. You have to bring Mensa into that. No, no, I've been trying to do that 
uh, for some years now. And right. I will, I, feel like I will have a telephone I, conference with a cup of rum in a, in a few weeks. Oh well, that would be interesting. <laughs> I, 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 I think the strategy must come from, in this case, the XCOM and down. As well. And, uh, yeah, it, it has to be it, it, the whole it, it has to, a big picture. You, you don't need members to support the idea, and many members are way too comfortable on we are a social club and we get together just to play and we are not committed to do absolutely anything that may be and, um, and that also I, I even tried <laughs> I applied for a position at the XCOM and I lost and actually all the all the candidates who were actually trying to do something lost against other people who were willing to do much Nothing. Jobs. No, no, I, I don't see they are doing anything. For example, we were talking about the website. It has been, yeah. I mean, they, they just uh, take the budget and throw it to the trash can for, I'm for sorry, years. I'm, I'm for, for example now, of the opinion, so. <laughs> why does every Mensa create a website? Yes, they should have a website. But for example, if the teams, if, if you have teams of volunteers, yeah, if, more or less every team meets some 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 kind of discussion forum. They need some place where they exchange they documents the and and yeah. things like that. And why does every team has to think about it uh, for themselves yeah. to that? And why isn't is it not provided centrally? Yeah, but, but I'm sorry, but centrally but there is there is yes. <laughs> centrally there is. <laughs> no, sorry, but if it is planned properly, yeah, then it is feasible. Yes, and I'm sorry, you well. you're pouring fuel on my. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been jumping up and down in front of the IBD saying that since 2008. The point is, we have no selection process for accomplished leaders. Yeah. So we will elect whoever seems a good picture. So that's a paradigm shift. Do we want accomplished leaders from real life to become our leaders? Or do we just continue to elect whoever? Because the problem is that today, there's too many um, chairmen, there's too many members of the boards, and there are too many on XCOM that are not accomplished leaders in their own life. And many of those who are not are afraid to make bold decisions. So we do not get bold decisions. Actually, quite often, we don't get any decisions at all. But this is a structural problem that comes before even the strategy talk, which I did like. Um, and the only thing I saw that you missed was two things. One is um, what I see is our ultimate goal can be accomplished partly by making uh, it easy for each and every member to create something for other members. We are not facilitating members to do things for members very well. And we are not targeting the young, the 16 to just, 20. Yeah, just stay in here. Just stay in here. That's not ah. the subject. <laughs> um, so that's the two points, I think. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Um, I agree with most of what you said, except for one point. Uh, I don't think you need to be a successful leader in real life to do it in Mensa, as long as you have the understanding that you, you, you should have a certain way of thinking. Uh, it, I don't think sure, that you have sure. to have it approved in real life. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite example. Now, yeah. I am interested in strategy and I work on it. I work on it for myself. I'm not working mm -hmm. in a strategic position, uh, but I think I can contribute quite a bit. And uh, if not, I'm also willing to hand it over to other people who can do more about it. But that is, you need, you need to have a, a proper idea about that. I've seen you. You were no, first. But that train has passed. This is much, much, much more interesting than the <laughs> Cynthia. Okay. Uh, it, it's just uh, that uh, Willem is somewhere around, so he would be disappointed not to uh, to to be considered at the fact that he did start a strategy mm -hmm. at the XCOM, although I think his strategy was it was too, 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 too fine defined, was it? I heard. Uh, it was very far from completing the, all of the Mensa goals. So Sometimes I don't want to say it's lame, but yes, you should it's start lame. with the 80% um, before you have, have, have reached the 100. 
because if you if you start with the eighty percent thing, then you also still have the chance to in, to to build in other things that you haven't hadn't thought about. Alex, I think it's a vicious circle what we are talking about because uh, if you if you want to go like not for uh, this uh, friendly environment that we have together and go for other things, it's uh, general speaking harder. So if you want to go to grow your, your numbers, you will go for quantity and not for quality. So if you go for quantity and not for quality, uh, then you cannot have uh, all these hard things because more the, the, the more the people, the, the harder it is. Uh, if you want to have uh, better quality, then you won't have uh, enough votes in the IBD to have a strategy in there. So it's a vicious circle. If, if, if you want to have great numbers, so that you can save the strategy, you cannot go for quality. If you have quality, you cannot save the strategy. Not necessarily, but okay. <laughs> you get the point. You have the word and TK. Yeah, I just want to say my name is Philip. I'm a member of the Swiss board. And um, it's nice for here in Germany if you have the luxury to have a strategic team. But we have, we fight to get the thousands member, and if you look who is active, we are happy to get the board together. There's just not enough people in smaller mansions to have all these other stuff, which would be nice to have, but we just don't have the resources. I don't think that you that you need to bother about all of these things with the uh, mansions of your size. I think for you it is most important to develop, and I yeah. hope that you get some support of it also from Mensa International. And uh, it is more when when your work gets more complex, when you when you have when you really have to start about well we get we have, we get more M's, so we have more finances. What is our responsibility about the finance at the moment? I think your 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 finances uh, are pretty clear. And straightforward. I don't think that you that you need to bother that much about things like that. So mm -hmm. I think for you the priority is to develop first into a bigger mensa. I disagree. Yeah, you're right. Um, TK, then I've seen you and you, and he is also. A I just said I disagree. <laughs> okay, TK. I just want to slightly disagree with Alex as well because I think as soon as we start thinking we have either quality or quantity. Yeah. We limit ourselves radically, and basically, we offer quality. This is what actually is one of the things that Mensa does. And so we can keep on developing, and as soon as we're kind of like connected to other groups that you would come from, I go to lots of conferences, and I meet tons of people who are Mensa material. So basically, it's just kind of like inviting them over, making ourselves available for others, and one of the best projects again, what the Netherlands did, like the game Yard Boat, which kind of like hit the EU news, I don't know whether you're all aware of that, they're repeating it this year, and, and so to kind of like be active in the real world and not just in the Mensa game room downstairs. <laughs> yeah. I would like to say that yeah. Mensa Denmark is not a big organization either. We're about 14, 1500 members. So our strategy is very much also a growth strategy, but not just in numbers. We want, you know, more women, uh, uh, mm -hmm. more young people, maybe more people of other ethnicities, etc., so that we have more balanced representation. So that's also to Alex. You can have both. Uh, what I'm saying is, strategy doesn't have to be a huge big master plan. You can have, as you know, a smaller version. It's basically an idea of where you want to go and what you want to work with. That's yeah. so. The even roadmap. in a small organization, the you can have a strategy. Yeah, it's a road plan. Very short about why quality and quantity can be combined. The, what I see different places around the world, wherever I am using a uh, national data is that the easier it is for the members to do something for each other together to invite them, to excite them, to exchange opinions with them, the more it'll, it just grows on its own. And it doesn't grow numbers just because you want numbers. It grows be because people bring friends in and say, hey, this is so fun, you've got you to be part of this. 
Yeah. So those two things. Already, if you, you do, yeah. if you do the strategy, if you do, if you think about it's, it, 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 I, I, I know the that same. Uh, in theory it's great, and you just uh, sell it like uh, no. This is practice. Two this is not new. I would bring my friends, which is not quality, and it would be fun, which what is also quality? not quality. But come on, it's like in one phrase I'm you sorry. said I would I'm bring sorry, my friends, is, and it's is, fun. This, <laughs> this is not quality. This hey. is just. I didn't say that it's bad to grow your number. I just say that it, it, it's one thing to do this, it's another thing to do that. It's uh, if, if, uh, Your strategy could be, I, I want to be enormous, I want to have uh, 10,000, 50,000 members. It's a good strategy. Yeah. This is your strategy, and you can follow it. Yeah, but uh, of course, if you have an open Definitely. test which is uh, online and everyone knows the, the the answers before you go to give the test, <laughs> this is not quality. Of course, it's not quality. It, and there are national methods that do that. I think it, it, I think it, we are starting. Like, I think we're, we are we're entering a discussion into, yeah, yeah, okay, into sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, the the Mensa growth strategy. And uh, although I, I wouldn't mind to continue that, I, I also would give a, like to give a chance to other aspects. And perhaps some of you have, like you. Well, I, I, have a question. Woody I have a question here. Um, Mensa Belgium, for most, I'm, I'm involved with Mensa Belgium right now. Uh, we, we've come out of a crisis. We now have about 500 members. And um, during the last two years, um, in several groups, uh, like example uh, around around the magazine, uh, and other groups as well, PR people as well, we were asking questions. What what do we stand for? So uh, we had this question. We we need to have something about mission, vision. What's our mission? What's our vision? What's our so this question came up, and um, the previous board picked up the question, but they didn't have the personnel to to do something with it. Uh, but we had one member who said, okay, I want to do it, so we kind of outsourced it. But now we have a new uh, board. And now, um, well, we could do either do nothing with it or do something with it. Fortunately, we have someone in the board who, who wants this, to take this a step further. And that, uh, now I come to my question because I, I see and hear that there are several board members of, of several members who are... Uh, involved in, in similar projects, I would like to to leave this this uh, this session with a list of, of, of email addresses, people to contact, so I can pass them on to 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 my fellow board members, so she knows who to contact. That's my. Uh, when you leave, please enter your email address here. <laughs> and. I'll take a photo of that and send it to the email addresses on there. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you because, cool. well, but now it's just those two people. Well, the board is yeah. the board. Um, uh, just before I pass on the word to who was first Rudy, um, let me just tell you um, in my presentation in Boston uh, was Heather. Heather Quarry, uh, who's also on the on the international board, and she also wants to do something with Mensa, Mensa International. I've mm -hmm. asked whether I could join, yeah. and she agreed. And, uh, and since then, I haven't heard from her. I don't know what's yeah. happening, but I certainly will pass that on to her then. Yeah. Udi, please, senior. Okay, mm -hmm. after all. Hi, I'm, I'm Udi, former kind chairman of Mensa Austria, right now the international treasurer, member of the XCOM, which was mentioned here several times. I agree with mm -hmm. many things of the presentation, like this crazy Mensa holds no opinion. I'm always fighting in many places against it. Of course, we have no opinion in concern of religion or political opinion, but in respect of humanity, of the many basic things, we should have opinions. Yes. And the strategic discussion at the ExCom meeting on the agenda, one of the first points one of the first items always is strategy, but the progress is not as it should be. The name of Willem was mentioned. Willem started a big strategic discussion in detail in some aspect. In my opinion, and what I'm doing on the board is to come to a solution for a strategic team like there is the lead team 
that there is a worldwide team, not only two years, because all the four positions they are limited to two years most of the time, but that there should be like a lead organization, a strategic organization, and they could then identify the basic things, they could identify the strategy. They could present a strategy to the IDT because the final decisions are all taken on the IDT. But if we don't have a working team, like he is working with other things, we never will come to a satisfying strategy. And we will see if this XCOM will come to a solution, but I think it takes more time. And it takes people with energy, and we have to identify it. Well, I'm totally willing to give this presentation also to IBD if I'm invited. <laughs> so, Roland, Holly, Holly and Peter. Um, I have uh, uh, two things. Uh, first thing is that uh, you have approximately five minutes left. Yeah, five minutes. <laughs> um, and second, my question, you already mentioned that you already gave this presentation in Boston. I assume that you ended with the same question. Uh, and I was wondering what, what was the uh, uh, response of especially the American audience and Canadians that were there? As I mentioned Heather, she was sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Okay. No. <laughs> no, that's it. I think it, it, it has come to the to the conscience that we should do something about it. Right. I'm there, I would like to do it, I'm interested in it, and I, I really look forward to it. And Rudy, you would be a great support. <laughs> Holly! There's too much I want to say, I guess I'll wait until it's my actual presentation time, because everything here overlaps with my presentation. It's funny, in Boston it was the other way around, so you commented a lot of mine. This time I'm probably going to be commenting a lot on your presentation, so I'll, I'll wait until it's my turn. Peter. Well, just to say uh, for everybody's information that um, the plan is that Denmark will be presenting uh, our new open source homepage at the IBD meeting this time, courtesy of the Danish board and lots of support. We're going to give it away to whoever wants it, whether it be a country or a region in the US, whatever it is. Hopefully we'll have a team um, standing by to help people leverage into um, their own language uh, and their own needs. Um, it's just something we'll be offering um, from Denmark side. Uh, Denmark side. If uh, somebody would like to do that, they're very welcome. We will welcome also little donations that will be put towards further developing it. But as we've seen six years, um, the IB has not been able to provide that kind of service. Now one of the small countries in the world would like to provide that for you. Thank you. It's Pierpaolo from Mensa Italia. It's my first international experience with Mensa. I'm a member since a couple of years, but I stayed like, kept sort of low profile because I was involved immediately in the local board, uh, not the Italian board, but the regional board, so I was already filled up with time to manage the members. But I'm very happy that I'm now here. I would like just to share two points of view about the how and a what. Uh, I had a long experience in a youth association when I was at the university, and we also had the same problem, like uh, getting together and partying was working perfectly, but uh, initiatives were often heterogeneous and anarchic, sort of. And by the way, my uh, Mensa looks very anarchic to me. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen such an important organization with such a diverse... Uh, a local governance system. Um, what they came up with, and it worked quite well, was a sort of long-term long planning, which, uh, which was both central and open. So the equivalent of the IPD was used to present proposals of a topic that should have been taken care of for the next year, or for the next two years. And then, without any force uh, implied from above, everybody locally could hop on the train and decide I'm strong enough to do an event concerning this topic. And this went quite well. I mean, it was a good mixture of having a, a line of work, but freedom for locally to adopt it or not and how to adopt it. And about the what, um, I do agree we should, say, we should have our say on things. Still, I feel uh, working on the second point, which is intelligence, 
and, and fostering intelligence and creativity and whatever is more like our core business. So I totally agree that sustainability is something we should side with. We should express our support for any initiative worldwide about sustainability. But sort of, I don't think it, sustainable is intelligent, I do agree. On the other hand, I think we should support that, that before we should really be distinctive for the work on intelligence. That's my point of view. Because that's really about Mensa. Mm -hmm. I think it doesn't, one doesn't exclude the other. No, no, it's and not exclusion. I, 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 I would even go so far um, to say, um, well, I, I, I'd uh, argue your line of argumentation about sustainability. What I want to bring in is to how do we use the high, the, that high intelligence potential to, for, to the benefit of mankind? It is very likely that it will be has got something to do with sustainability, yeah? Mm -hmm. But that is something we need to, we need, we should discuss, and that we should be aware of, and that we should start taking action and not only discuss. <laughs> yes, I totally agree. I just, I was just saying that from a marketing and identity point of view, I personally see as more effective to be uh, recognized as the ones working on intelligence that help sustainability and not the ones working on sustainability that are also intelligent. Um, Peter? Yes, I think if we try to interpret the foster in further intelligence, at least for the foreseeable future, as make every single member um, comfortable in their own lives and with who they are and what they can do, then they will go out into the world and do good stuff. Mm -hmm. If we can do that first at least, then we can all, all, always talk about those goals later on, but I think that, that's got to be one of the first things. I think, I think members and protect members and make them more comfortable with being smart and make them accomplished. We are running out of time. Um, I totally invite everybody, wherever you see me, start talking to me. I will be at the uh, dinner on top of Zurich tonight. Uh, I will be at the gala dinner. I would, I'd really appreciate if we could continue that. And I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.